Are you prepped for the winter and then spring market coming up? Well, we're going to talk about exactly what you should do to get ready today. This episode of Keeping It Real is brought to you by Real Geeks. How many homes are you going to sell this next year? And do you have the right tools? Is your website turning soft leads into interested buyers? And are you spending money on leads that aren't converting? We'll find out why agents across the country come to Real Geeks as their technology partner. Real Geeks was created by an agent for agents. They pride themselves on delivering realtors a real estate sales and marketing solution to generate more business. Real Geeks is easy to use. Their websites are fast and built for lead conversion with a smooth search experience for the end user. Real Geeks is mobile friendly, delivering an excellent user experience on the go. Real Geeks includes an easy to use CRM, so once your leads sign up on your website, you can track their interest and have great follow up triggers. Real Geeks is loaded with tons of marketing tools to nurture your leads and increase your brand awareness. Visit realgeeks.com forward slash keeping it real pod and find out why realtors come to Real Geeks to generate more business. Again, visit realgeeks.com forward slash keeping it real pod. This episode is also brought to you by Rebly Aerial Maps. An aerial retail map can sell a commercial listing before an investor ever sees the property. But creating retail maps takes hours, robbing you of time you could spend selling real estate. And if you're tired of spending late nights scouring the internet for retailer logos to populate your commercial real estate map, or you're tired of paying a designer hundreds of dollars to do it for you, well, you'll love Rebly. Now, Rebly is a real estate map generator that lets you create custom designed professional aerial retail maps for your commercial sales flyers and listing appointments in minutes, not hours. Simply enter the subject's property address, auto populate nearby retailer logos with the click of a button, and download your aerial retail map. Rebly turns the headache of creating commercial property maps into a quick five minute task so you can spend less time making maps, and more time making money. So get your first aerial retail map for free today by visiting rebly.com. That's R-E-B-L-I-E.com and sign up for an account. No credit card required. And now on to our show. Welcome to Keeping It Real, the largest podcast made by real estate agents and for real estate agents. My name is DJ Paris. I'm your guide and host through the show. Today is our monthly series called Coaching Moments with Ryan D. April. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about Ryan if you're new to our show. Uh, Ryan actually comes on every single month to give our listeners and our viewers a coaching moment and a coaching session. So let me tell you about Ryan. Ryan D'April is a progressive thought leader focused on providing for his agents and staff at D'April Properties. His strengths are his motivational skills, coaching style, and his dedication to training. He has 14 offices throughout Chicagoland, and he's also in Wisconsin, Indiana, Michigan, and Florida. D'April Properties focuses on high customer service, managing and executing their agents' marketing and transaction management for them so that their agents can stay focused focused on their business. Now, if you'd like to take your career to the next level, or maybe you're just not getting the attention you need from your existing company, please check out D'April Properties. Uh, visit dapralproperties.com. That's D-A-P-R-I-L-E. Uh, just like it's, I guess, just like it sounds, dapralproperties.com. There'll be a link to that in our show notes. We should also mention that in addition to um, uh, running a real estate brokerage, Ryan also has a title company, a mortgage arm, um, and also, um, I feel like I'm missing one Well, on a technology arm as well. So Ryan really runs a lot of different companies in within the real estate space. So his perspective, uh, when we talk about how to stay on, on target is not just focused around brokerage. It's really kind of a holistic approach. So we're excited to have him on and, and get his, his wisdom. Ryan, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Software, our, our software company is in Nello. So it's, uh, it's a custom made, uh, just since you, you brought up, um, it's a it's a custom made CRM that integrates with the MLS and other uh, providers out there. Um, we're actually going to market with it. We're going to market first with the mortgage product. So we've had a lot a tremendous amount of success. I just started a just started calling on individuals about three weeks ago and getting a tremendous amount of interest on it. But we've been running our businesses off it for the past couple of years. It's been uh, really successful. So we're really excited about that. So I appreciate you mentioning that. 
And, and it also just to sort of whet the appetite of, of the listeners as this, what, you know, there's a million different CRMs for realtors in the marketplace. What makes yours in particular, I, I find most attractive and interesting is that it's really what I would call all event focused. So it's able to identify reasons for an agent to then reach out to their sphere of influence, their existing clients. It actually identifies opportunities um, and really prompts the user or the agent to then take action, which a lot of CRMs are just like upload your database, create some sort of strategy for staying in touch, and then it will remind you to do that. But yours actually identifies opportunities, which I think is so cool. Well, a lot of them I find have too much information and most people only are using about 10% of it. And uh, so I try to, you know, keep the, you know, the acronym KISS, keep it simple, stupid, and just minimize it so we actually could track our business, be very well aware of it, be aware of where our business is coming for. We have a snapshot. It'll, it'll tell you your main lead source, your, where your primary amount of your business is, anniversaries and closing dates, all that kind of stuff. Uh, tie into uh, social media connections with your network so you can see what's going on with them, track how you're, but you know, you got to participate in it, right? It's like anything, you know, it's, you're, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. And, you know, so that's why coaching is always so important. I was with a loan officer of ours today and he, he said, I, I could spend four hours in this thing. It's got so much. I'm like, exactly. You, you can, and it'll tell you exactly what to do step by step. And then it becomes a process, not uh, just a guessing game. What am I going to do today? You know, most of us wake up and we just react to the day where yes. I, I'd rather you have a plan laid out and just run that plan consistently. Um, yeah. And I encourage everyone who's listening. This is the, this is such a simple thing that everybody already knows, but I encourage you the night before, uh, you know, to really go over your day and, and maybe just identify the three to five major things you want to accomplish the next day. And then also revisit that in the morning, because I, I even I, um, knowing all of that, I still have to remind myself, okay, I'm before I go to bed, let's take a look at tomorrow and let's identify a few things. So obviously that's a very simple, obvious step, but, uh, something that is, is easily overlooked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to talk about today? Well, let's talk about the market. Let's talk about, you know, we're coming in pretty soon to the fourth quarter. I mean, it goes like that, doesn't it? Um, let's talk about how do we, you know, prepare for this fall season, which is upon us. Uh, and then, you know, more importantly, are you ready for the spring market? <clears throat> and what does your spring market look like? And it, I, I think I want to pause just for a moment because I want to, I want to mention why I think this is so important because I, I spend a lot of time with realtors. Obviously we have a lot at our, at our firm and then I'm, I'm involved with our local association. So I even get to talk to a lot of realtors outside of, of, of our company. And even the most really the, the more successful realtors that I talk to, everyone seems to be really focused on what's going on today in the market, right? And we, we talk, you know, if I ask somebody, how's it going? They talk about what's going on today. Oh, inventory's down, rates are up. You know, it's a struggle. And I don't hear a lot about, well, what else should I be thinking about today, right? So I'm, I'm excited for us to provide some additional uh, insight into maybe a different way to think about today. Um, and you were saying, you know, let's think about the spring. Absolutely. And in fact, I'll, I'll even share my screen with you if I can mm -hmm. to show you how we look at it. Is that okay with you? Sure. And we'll just describe it for our audio listeners. That's fine. Oh yeah. Okay, fine. That's right. That's right. It's a podcast. I'm thinking because we're on video here, but let me see if I could pull this up. Can I, I'm going to, I'll be careful some confidentiality here. So let me just think of how I can do this here. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit, uh, let me come over here. Okay. Let me make this a little bit bigger, but let me show you how this works. Um, and I'll do my best to describe it to our audience. Oh, you have to allow me to share. Okay. I will do that. Sorry about that. I just, just came. Last no, I, I always, uh, you should be able to now. Yep. Okay, so you can see my screen here? I can see it, yeah. So I'm just going to go kind of quickly through this. I, I don't want to be on it too long here, but like this is in leads. This is a sales funnel, right? And I'm going to make it bigger so you don't really see client names here, okay? Sure. So is that okay? Yeah. We can. All right, this is one of our agents' actual dashboards, right? You could, you know, here, this is the visual cues are incredibly important, right? So this particular agent 
has closed $19 million a year to date, $3 million currently pending, 5.6 million active, another 5.6 of clients that they feel will close this calendar year. That, that comes from this here, closing this calendar year. So, you know, in coaching and working with this agent, this agent can manage this themselves by looking at it. They could go and filter over here by this year, and it'll show just individuals that you have going this year. So I'm not going to show their names there, uh, but you could go through and calibrate. Like, do I really have $5.68 million of leads, not active clients, leads, right? Here's active. That's a totally different animal. Leads that will close this calendar year. And now that we're like four and a half months left of the year, it's, it's going to get tighter and tighter. So you, you're, you, you, you got to get more and more um, uh, critical on these particular leads and then shift them. Hey, are they more next year? Or are you even certain that they're going to transact or hire you? So on this particular loan off agent's uh, dashboard here, you'll see you got $18.9 million closing next year. That's wonderful. So I'm going to click on closing next year, right? And you're going to see there's 33 leads. So I would come over here and I'm going to look at, again, I'm doing my best not to show you the client name. Sure. But there's a last note date right here, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to organize like, okay, so of this, and this is, again, you could tell this is a, this, this, let's just look, this loan, this agent will do anywhere between 25 and 30 million in volume this year. Um, seven years in the business and monitors their business, takes it very, you know, serious what their day is. They've used this dashboard uh, consistently, the Zanello product. And now we're teaching and coaching our agents like, hey, Make sure you close this $5.68 million of business this year and you're taking care of it. And of course, look at your network and make sure you're in flow with your network. But look at all of this business that you have next year. Click on it. That's 33, 33 individuals for a total of $19 million of business. When was the last time you touched base with them? When was the last time you saw them for a cup of coffee? When was the last time you went to dinner or lunch with them? This is next year. This year is over. This year, we're just maintaining and closing out what we got currently going on. You got to be looking downfield what's going on next year. So I have a quick, quick question. So, so looking at, at this, uh, describing it, there are, we mentioned about just about under 6 million in possible closings this year that, or that rather the, this particular, again, it's, I know it's a mortgage agent, but really it's same. Well, this is a real estate agent. This is a real estate oh, agent. I'm sorry. This is a real estate agent. This is real so, estate. Um, mortgage agent looks a little bit different. Yeah. So, so there's about you know, 6 million or so that's that we, we want to close this year. And you said better make sure they're closing this year or, or updating it to maybe next year or removing them from, from, uh, yeah. from the funnel. How do you, how do you recommend somebody goes in to that group um, and, and, and sees it, you know, what's the actual process of staying in touch to say, Hey, are you, are you going to close without just asking them? Or do you recommend just asking the client? Are you planning on yeah, doing you, something? You, you ask you know, you, 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 you focus first on relationship, but then you got to be direct and, and, and have conversation. Hey, when are we going to go out? When do you want to list your home? You know, where's the home going to be priced at you? That's what you're going to ask internally. If they're a buyer, when do you want to get out next? And you got to it's like, well, let's get out, you know, let's start looking in November because it's September what? 13th today. Mm -hmm. uh, so, or 12th. Yes. Yesterday was September 11th. So, if somebody says, yeah, no, Ryan, thanks for reaching out. You know, I'm thinking we're ready, but we don't want to get out to like, maybe like right after Thanksgiving, I'm coming here and I'm changing them to closing next, next year. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, they're not going away. It's just when I come over to my snapshot, right. And my snapshot saying, Hey, I'm forecasted to do 34 million this year. I've closed 20 million. I got 3.2 million dollars of pending. I've got 5.6 that are active, but here's the 5.6 that are certain to close. These are the leads. So this would go down, this would go up, right? Here's right. your leads. And, and so you could do your timeline, 5.8 this year, 11 uncertain they're going to transact and 19 million for next year, right? Here's your lead sources. You can see 50% from the network referring them, 40% from uh, network referral. Then we have open house, internet, relocation leads, whatnot. So, and you do the exact same thing with your actives. You come over here and active, they're active actually, it's, his active. And active means you're currently working with them. Correct. So he's got $4.96 million of sellers and $735,000 worth of buyers, which comes out to that 5.6 number, which is happens to be very similar to what the leads are. They're closing this year, but they're two different categories. This is 14, 14 active clients. When we come over to leads, $5.68 million in a total of 16 leads. Now, 
Now you close out your year. Now you, now you, you calibrate it, you figure where they're out, you close it out, and then you look downfield and you say, okay, great. I got 19 million here for next year, which is 33 people. You better be in flow with those 33 people this next uh, you know, four months so that you are their realtor uh, in 2023. What what you've worked with thousands of agents over your tenure as as you were an agent yourself, of course. You now have a company with hundreds and hundreds of of agents and loan officers and 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 different um different different sort of jobs within the real estate industry. But with respect to realtors, um, I wonder what percentage of agents know what their actual pipeline looks like. Um, I bet it's a pretty low number who actually know, okay, well, they might know where they're at for the year, but do they really have a good sense of what's closing before the end of the year? Yeah, maybe. Uh, what's closing next year? That's got to be even a, a smaller percentage of people who know this. I wonder just by just by forecasting this way, what this does to someone's business, even if it's, it's kind of like I always heard, if you just write down your goals, you have a better chance of achieving them, even if you don't do anything. Obviously, you have to do things too, but I, I suspect this is a major first step, just getting it all down and reviewing right. the numbers. It really is. And, and, and I think the key is maintaining your business. And uh, and a lot of us, gosh, I would venture to say 92 to 94% of the real estate agents out there are are reactive and not proactive. And um, loan officers too. Like, look, the past 20 years in the mortgage lending business, it's been order taking. There's just no, except for 2008, it's been order taking and it has shifted. Loan officers have got to be out there. They've got to be proactive. They've got to be creating relationships with their sphere of influence, their network and real estate agents. And, um, you know, it's, it's probably the worst mortgage lending business we've seen in 20 years. And, but now you're seeing 94% of the loan officers struggling. Real estate agents, our real estate market's shifting too. Y you don't have to struggle. The business is always there. But if you're a reactive real estate agent, uh, when the market dips, your business will dip too. There's no doubt. Now, if you're a proactive agent, when the market dips, your business will dip as well, but not dramatically. In most cases, you'll probably have an uptick versus a minor downtick. Um, but in the mortgage lending business, we're seeing loan officers with businesses down 45 to 65 percent. Real estate agents, you don't want that, um, but you will get it if you're reactive. And and, and I, I even think there's little subtle subtle ways to start the day that that sort of create more reactivity. I know for me, I had to stop checking my phone the moment I woke up. Because I used to check to see what emails came through over the night. Not that you don't need to look at that. Of course you do. But it, it put me in a reactive mindset, literally within the first moment of waking up. I was like, I better see see what happened over, over, the, over the night. And it, it's really never anything that can't wait an hour or two before I start my day. But I, I don't do that anymore because it puts me in a reactive mindset. It's like, okay, now I need to react to this. Now I need to, and I've like, no, no, I need to first set my intention for the day and really have a good awareness of what my day is going to look like. Then I can go back and, and I now just only allow myself to check emails a few times a day. Yeah. That's one of the best things you can do. It's not easy. It's hard. <laughs> that, that phone is a powerful thing. I was at Iowa with my daughter over the weekend, like we were talking about. And um, I left my wallet at home. And, oh, no. Yeah. Um, my wife, wife was with me. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, but the tab came and I just asked the lady, do you do Apple Pay? She said, of course. There's a QB. My, my daughter said, Dad, you soon won't need uh, a wallet or, or credit cards anymore. I said, honey, you won't need a wallet anymore. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's a matter of time where... You won't even need a, I hate I, that lump in my back. The annoying. Yeah. I can't stand it. And so, um, but because of that, I'm getting stupid Wall Street Journal alerts. I'm getting, I'm going to turn that shit off. Right. I'm getting, I, I've turned my email alerts off, my text messages off. I'm a, I, so it's me too. It's like any of us, right. It's like, you know, things like kryptonite, once it grabs you, you know, it'll control your day. And I, you know, I heard this expression one time, like if you treat the market like God, right? If you treat the market like God, uh, then like God giveth, God taketh away. That's what's going to happen to you. So you can't treat the market like God. You got to take control of your marketplace and your marketplace is your network and your network should be in a database and you should have a CRM and you should use and live in that CRM. And there's a lot of people that are part-time passive in this business. They it's their full income, right? But it's a, 
It just, it's a very passive approach to it. But the top of the top, you know, the guests that you have on these shows, uh, they treat it like a business. They're dead serious. They're involved. They probably do know what they have closing next year. They probably do the know the name of the clients and, and their temperatures and whatnot. And that's why I built this. I didn't see anything out there like that. So that's what I created for our company. Um, now I'm going to start sharing it with others. It's very exciting. And I, I do think this idea of, you know, text messages, we, we could talk about this for a moment because I would like to get your take on this. So text message, and I only bring this up because I hear a lot of agents talk about it, is that the challenge with one of the challenges with having our devices with us at all times, aside from being, well, part of being reactive is clients text. And most people, I think, find that that's a much bigger part of their business than it used to be. People are more comfortable. And a text exchange doesn't have a beginning or an ending. Well, it has a beginning, but it doesn't have an, an ending really, right? So people can just continue on this conversation anytime, day or night, uh, really, what, there are no boundaries around texts, really. Um, so I'm curious on how you coach your agents to not let the texting become like, because it can be infinite and whenever, and you see that text come in and you don't want to be reactive. You're like, I'm only going to respond a couple times during the day, but how do you set the, the right boundary and how do you let the client know that I'm only responding or do you recommend going a different way with that? Yeah, no, I, so, okay. So there's two different things. So one, it seems like you're asking, how do you manage the client and your time? So you're, you, you got to react to what they want, but so your whole day is not reactive versus proactive. And so you have to, you do got a time block and you have to say, when am I going to be the one sending the text out? versus the text coming in. When am I going to be the one sending the text out? When am I going to be, where am I going to track it? And so that I know, hey, uh, DJ Paris is in my network. I want to be in touch with him once a month, being his buddy, because the reality is once every seven years, he buys and sells a home. And every single year, four people in his network buy or sell a home. So he's got potential for referrals for me, right? That's just how it comes down to. So if I have 200 people in my network that I'm in flow with every single month, I have a potential 800 referrals for my network. And 16% of them are going to transact. So that's another 32 potential transactions. So where does my business come from? Where do I make my money? Is being in flow with DJ Paris, who is not actually an active client, right? He's somebody that's in my network. And then I go on and block. So that's why I built this thing kind of like uh, the old, you know, the, the, the Toyota manufacturing system where it's, you know, uh, just in time to Kanban, the visual flow. You have, you have different silos, right? You have one is your network and there's 200, 300, 400 people in there. That's my job. I've got to be proactive with them. Then I'll come over to my next one, which is my leads. Closing this year, closing next year, not starting to transact. Those leads live in that network tab. I'm skipping over them because it says, hey, it's in your funnel. It's either in your leads or your active or your under contract tab. So when I come over to my uh, network and I'm being proactive, I'll see DJ Paris and oh, I touched base with him in August 15th of 2022, it's September 12th. And guess what? I sent him a Facebook message and that's the note I sent. So now I'm going to just do a little research, two minutes. I'm going to pick up a phone and I'm going to shoot you a text message. That's how I'm going to do it. Now, when I and so we're, we've been talking about, about monitoring that activity, social media activity in the sense of are, you know, hey, when's the last time I proactively, you know, reached out to DJ and, and what was the the way I did it? Did I do it via text, via social media, yeah, phone, track all email, that. mail? Right. Yeah. That needs to be tracked. That needs to, and that's for you. That your your borrower, your 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 buyer or seller, they're not gonna, it's for you, right? And again, it's nurturing relationships. So I see DJ and he was at Mercer Recordia the past weekend and he put it on Facebook. I said, oh my gosh, DJ, I got two friends with siblings over at Misericordia and we go, I golf in the bums outing every year, right? And all of a sudden, because of that, I'm able to create immense, immediate connection with you. And then I move on to the next important person in my network. And that's me nurturing my relationship. And that's the proactive. Now, when I go to text you that, I might see five text messages from active clients or leads. I gotta, I gotta move on. I gotta, I gotta push those aside and go through my. I got DJ. I'm doing seven a day. I got six more to do. If I start at nine, I'll be done at nine forty-five, and now I could get over to those text messages. But before I get all those text messages, I go through the network. I'm gonna go to my leads. Okay, I got forty-five leads. Of those forty-five leads, seven of them have not heard from me in three weeks. Great. Now I just got seven to go. And then all 45 have heard from me within the past three weeks. And now you go to the reactive. Let's go file these uh, active clients that text me. 
do, 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 update it. Go to my active clients. I got 15 active clients and seven texting me. I'll update that and I'll go knock out the other eight. I've just accomplished an entire day work by 11 o'clock in the morning. And I can now do whatever I want with the day. Right. And 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 what, what we haven't talked about is servicing existing clients. We haven't talked about checking the market. We are talking about business building activities, which are staying in touch in your case uh, with, with this example uh, with your network, monitoring it so that you actually are tracking it rather and putting all the activity in so you know exactly how long it's been so that because because people might be listening going, OK, well, I know I have to reach out to these 30 people today or, or however many people are, are on my show up to, on my CRM today. But now you get to keep, be a bit creative with it. You you don't have to call 30 people. You can, or you can, oh, you know, you can see what they're doing, posting on social. Like Ryan said, he saw that I was I was at an event this weekend. And so he he might comment on that. That that counts, right? Anything counts. It doesn't have to be, hey, when are you buying or selling? It just has to be some sort of reach out. Um, and, and there's lots of ways to do that. So it's not like you have to call everyone and say, when are you buying or selling? Because Ryan knows I'm probably not buying or selling for a while. Exactly. This is exactly right. And it's, it's going to be more, more focused on you and the relationship, right? And then that way you attract business instead of chasing business. Now, at some point, especially in different businesses that you're in, so if you're a mortgage lender listening to the show, you, you need to ask for the referral. Uh, it's more appropriate in a business-to-business -business environment that loan officers are in versus a business-to-consumer, um, which real estate agents are. Loan officers, of course, are as well because they have they deal with the consumer. Um, but you know, a lot of majority of us, probably eighty percent of us, are our sales calls are on those real estate agents. Uh, so that's I was worth thinking, like, um, I was thinking, it's it's that that M. I think M. Scott Peck wrote the book. It's never crowded along the extra mile. Um, that, that he might have been the road less traveled guy. Anyway, somebody wrote. Uh, you know, actually, I think it was Robert Frost, the poet. But anyway, the the expression "it's never crowded along the extra mile." I don't remember who who wrote who said that or wrote right. it. But take the um, highway, there's less traffic up there. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Because I was just thinking. So I I, I moved into a new development um, a, a year and a half ago, and um, you know how many postcards I've received from realtors. Um, now again, am I going to move anytime soon? Are people who moved into a development moving? Probably not but a heck of a good time to start a relationship. Maybe we didn't have good experiences with our realtors. Oh. Not everyone does, right? I have gotten exactly zero postcards, zero. So that's, that's, so, so that's another point for all of our listeners here, right? I mean, the market's shifting. You got, you, it, it, it's going to be a flight to quality. You got to be up on your game if you want to have a similar year you had in 2020 and 2021. You've, it's not, it's not going to just come. You've got to be deliberate. You got to be proactive. One of the things that we should all be doing is in our database, right? We have previous sales. We should be looking at 2021 and 2020 sales and even 2019. We should be looking at data closed. We should yeah. be in tune with our past buyer clients on their home anniversaries, especially the ones for the immediate year. That's where your highest uh, degree of referrals are going to come from, but even the past three years, they, and that's where like that juicy referral business comes from. Uh, as you saw on uh, the agent's dashboard, I just had the $20 million production year to date, 50% was from his network. The other 50% was from his network referring him. That's Amazing. $10 million of referrals, people he had no idea, but the network he nurtured and took care of referred him that business. By the way, that average price point is just over three hundred thousand dollars for that twenty million dollar producer. So that's like seventy plus units in a year. So it's so for all the listeners across the country, right? You know who start saying to myself, "Well, he's in Chicago. They're probably eight nine hundred thousand dollars." Not that person. That that person's average price points in the mid three. In fact, three hundred thirty thousand dollars is Chicago land average price. It might have climbed up in the past year or so, but um, those numbers are attainable anywhere. Um, you just got to get a database. You got to get a group of people. You got to create a network. You got to nurture the network. You got to be consistent. You know, Denzel Washington, I saw a little clip on him. It was great. He's like, if you're not committed, you're never going to start. But if you're not consistent, you're never going to finish. Yeah. So many people are just not consistent. Um, I truly feel a database, a, a good CRM will bring you back to that consistency. And, and don't get distracted with all the bells and whistles because less is more, in my opinion, to a good CRM. 
And, you know, doing the little, it's always the little things. Uh, it's its remembering someone's home anniversary. Well, it's actually not remembering because no one's going to remember that, especially the person who moved in is probably not going to remember it either. But your CRM is going to remember that. And it's going to tell you today's so-and-so's home anniversary. Are you going to call them, text them, send them a social media post, drop off a gift, uh, send them a card? You're going to do something. Um, and, and there's you just vendors have to- out there that will help you with that as well. Client giant. I can't uh, attest to them because I've never used them, but my agents have, and they like it a lot. So uh, I'm giving them a shout out, even though I don't know them from Adam, but I've heard from a lot of agents that use it. It's really good for buyer clients when you're active with them. And then it's also very good for like those anniversaries. Um, it's customized. It's not branded, right? Which is good. It's it's like coming from you. It's genuine. So that's a that's a good resource for you guys to be looking at. And again, that's going to squeeze that orange and get you more referrals. I want to pause for a moment to talk about our episode sponsor, our one of my favorite companies out there, Follow Up Boss. Now, after interviewing hundreds of top realtors in the country for this podcast, do you know which CRM is used by more than any other by our guests? Of course, it is Follow Up Boss. And let's face it, following up is the key to taking your business to the next level. Follow Up Boss will help you drive more leads in less time and with less effort. Do not take my word for it. Robert Slack, who runs the number one team in the U.S., uses Follow-Up Boss, and he has built a $1.5 billion business in just six years. Follow-Up Boss integrates with over 250 systems, so you can keep your current tools and lead sources. Also, the best part, they have seven-day-a-week support, so you'll get the help that you need when you need it. And get this, Follow-Up Boss is so sure that you're going to love their CRM that for a limited time, they're offering Keeping It Real listeners a 30-day free trial, which is twice as much time as they give everyone else. And oh, yeah, yeah, no credit card required. So you can try it risk-free, but only if you use this special link. Visit followupboss.com forward slash real. That's followupboss.com forward slash real for your free 30-day trial. Follow up like a boss with Follow Up Boss. And now back to our episode. Absolutely. And so that's really interesting. So you, you were, let's go back to the example of, of the person that we looked at just, just, uh, it, we don't have to see any of the stuff, sure. but that's really interesting. So seven years in the business, 30 million average price point is actually less than the average Chicago home. So it's not like this person's playing in the ultra high net worth space. Mostly, um, you know, they're, they're working with average, uh, people and yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll read out the 14 clients that they're currently active with that he's currently active with. $265,000, that's a big one. One million, we've got a big one there. $400,000, I mean, it's, you know what I mean? Besides the exception of that $1 million one, but there's another one for $35,000. That's going to bring that back, right? Sure. It's, you know, uh, sold, you know, um, 67 units year to date. Hundred thousand dollars, two thirty-seven hundred thousand dollars, one fifty-five, two hundred thousand dollars, six forty-five, eighty thousand dollars, three hundred sixty-three thousand, one hundred forty-five thousand. That's just a quick sample. I, I'll, I'll stop going on and on, but I wanted to just you know for your viewers to hear like, you know, this is an individual who sold twenty million dollars year to date is still below thirty years old. You know, what I and mean? is probably going to close right around thirty or twenty-eight or so. Um, yeah, I mean it's already at twenty four million dollars with what's pending as well. If you add, if you add what they've closed, what he's closed here today, and what's currently uh, under contract is at 20, about twenty four million. That is, that is a heck of a good. Those are those are fantastic numbers for somebody in their twenties. Well, for any age, but certainly somebody who's not even thirty yet, and for being seven years in the industry, and for being in a year where there's we hear a lot of doom and gloom. That is that is fantastic. So so what's the secret to that person's uh, success, it, it just activity and consistency. Yeah. You know, here's the reality. In my opinion, this, this person has bought in to the system, the process that we've coached on, right. Uh, didn't fight it, just kind of followed through, had a me- mediocre first year, had an okay. Second year came out third year, stay consistent. I have a lot of agents that are having great bang out years. Uh, but I know they got something else coming to them because they're not being consistent. I've seen it time and time again. And so it's just, it's, are you consistent with it or are you caught up on the latest and newest fad and trend? 
And everybody's always going to come and tell us, here's the future of real estate. This is direction it's going to go. I, I, I haven't in my 20 years seen real estate change that much. Yeah. And I'm not going to start believing now that it's going to completely change to a different angle either. It comes down to individuals, the strength of the relationships. And you and I were talking about teams. I don't think the whole industry is going to go to teams. I really don't. That's One, good because that's that's all I keep reading about. So I'm glad to hear a different perspective. It, it's it's not. Um, it's I mean, not. most people are individual practitioners. So, it, it, And it's going to continue to be like that. And that's why I think, you know, real estate agents, you know, the concept of selling your book of business, sure, it'd be nice thing. It's get excited about it. There's nothing there, you guys. It's it's the relationships. It's you're going to ride out the sunset in this business, put away, max out that set IRA, that uh, or, or, or uh, um, self-directed 401k. Be smart with your money. Um, but, you know, it is high, unless you're in a completely transient marketplace. Uh, and in, in, in totally transient marketplaces, say like Chicago, right? Downtown Chicago or Miami New York. or New York, yeah. right? Yeah, online leads are going to give you more there, right? You're going to be able to be more transient. You know, open houses are probably going to be more successful because there's not such tight communities, right? Um, but in the majority of America, right, there, there are suburbs or neighborhoods or communities. Be a part of that community, um, and those people, individuals are hiring you because they know you, they like you, they trust you, they got a relationship with you. That's how people, I mean, it's very arbitrary what, how people pick real estate agents. It's the person that comes to mind, yeah. right? And they're usually calling one person. And it's the same thing, you know, when a lot of times when you're, you're building a home or you're going to get a remodeling project done or you're even hiring an attorney. It's who, the first person that comes to mind. Sure. Let's, I, I like you. Help me. That's just how it works. Yeah, I, I want to go back to to that individual for a second. I just realized something, yeah. and I, and I, I don't. I, I just want to sort of put this in the mind of our listeners again. Somebody in their seventh year, still not thirty years old yet, and my hit my is, just is, thirty. Yeah, I, I gotta remember. But yes, well, right around we'll say right around thirty, and right. seven years in, and is basically closing a deal what every five to six days. He has a transaction closing, something like that. He, he said he did about seventy. Uh, you, seventy. Let's just look here. Uh, under contract. Yeah, about 70. So this is somebody who's closing a transaction essentially every week. That is remarkable right then and there. And that is somebody who apparently, and by the way, half of his business came from his sphere of influence directly. The other okay. half came from his referrals from his sphere of influence. So it's not like he's even buying leads. 40% came from his network directly. Okay, so help me with my math. What's four times seven? 28, mm -hmm. right? Right, so 28 yep. deals came from his network. 32% came from his network referring him. So referrals from his network. Okay, so another 22 or so. Right, so what do we have total? What add those two together? 60 something, or no, right. uh, yeah, 50, yeah. Yeah, yeah 72, 73%. Then 13% came from four sales signs. Mm-hmm. 8% came from a lead from that listing, right? Amazing. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then an open house. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it all comes down to the power of that network. And then once you start going, you start getting listings, you start getting leads from your listings and it starts to snowball. Yeah. I mean, this is somebody who, I mean, if I were who's sure not been handed a lead. I have not heard, oh, he's either purchasing leads or been handed leads by the company. This is somebody who literally just has nurtured their sphere of influence for seven years. That um, is a very profitable. And what he's closed here today is a half a million dollars in gross commission income. That's a very profitable GCI. And there's a lot of people that do that kind of GCI, but it's not nearly that profitable because they're paying $10,000 a month for leads or more. I've seen it. You know, and yeah, then, that 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 is really that that case study of that individual. That is a remarkable person because um, it doesn't. It it might not seem remarkable, but if we think about uh, all of those numbers there stacked together, is whew, that is a heck of a that's a heck of a career right there for a, for somebody who's about thirty years old. That person does not live in Chicago. Okay, he's in one of our outlying markets, and that person is not originally from that area. Moved there seven years yeah. ago. 
And you just saw it's all from network and referral network. So anybody can do it. It's just, are you committed? And if you're, if you're not committed, you're never going to start. And there's probably 80% of our real estate agents are like that. And then are you consistent? Because if you're consistent, if you're not consistent, you're not going to finish. So it takes two really tough, you know, tubes of iron in your body to be committed and to be consistent. And I applaud those that consistently listen to your, your podcasts, that go to coaching, that go on to the next level. Um, you know, there are some that will just come easy to do and they'll just continue to do it. But for those of us that it's not, there are tools out there. They'll tell you exactly what you need to do, but you got to use them. You got to be in them. Um, it's surprising what would happen to your business if you dedicated three hours to it proactively versus four or five hours just being reactive all day long. Yeah, I think you, you really have to figure out a way to turn off the alerts, the notifications, and put the blinders on like the horses have in, in racing and just focus on the task ahead. And it's hard because we're all so connected. And it, it is it is a bit of setting up your systems to sort of make sure, like when I go to the gym, I make sure everything's turned off. Um, when I wake up in the morning, I make sure it's turned off. When I, there's certain times of the day when I, we, we, we want to do what's called one mindfulness, where you're focused on one activity at a time so you can give it its full attention and you're not pulled because we get a, a dopamine reward when, when we're reactive, because it feels like we just did something productive. We replied to an email. We, 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 and you have to do those things. We just want to structure it so that you're doing it intentionally versus, Oh, it just came across my plate and I, I really didn't want to pick up the phone right now. So I'm going to deal with that instead of picking up the phone and calling somebody and saying, Hey, I saw you were just on vacation. Where'd you go? Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. um, that's being proactive. Absolutely. And then you're focused more on your business than the news and the marketplace. Cause if you listen to the news and you're just watching the marketplace, you could go to a very dark place. <laughs> you well, you, 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 well, we, look, we know this about social media. I think, you know, you, what you've said about social media, about it being the way to maybe the most healthy way to think about it uh, from a business perspective is this is your, your uh, research and development. This is paying attention to what's going on with your clients so that you have a reason to reach out to them versus um, you know, really trying to make a splash yourself um, by promoting yourself, but you, you should probably figure out a way to do that, of course, too. And I know you agree with that, but using it more as a research and development tool versus a, uh, yeah. this, you know, yeah. You should be promoting yourself, but you should be putting equal amount of effort into nurturing your network. Now, most people spend 80% of their time promoting themselves and maybe probably less than 5% nurturing the network. If people got that to 50, 50, their business would just take off we just absolutely take off but um you know we're still in that even though facebook and instagram and tiktok and everything else been around for over a decade now if not longer right um but it's still kind of new to us um you know we're kind of jumping into that and making that like our center point of branding yeah, you have to be really careful because because as we as you and I know, and I mean the research is really clear at this point that the more time you spend on social media absorbing it is you actually get you know your your unhappy your your happiness goes down your you feel more disconnected so there's a lot of good reasons to stay away from social media as a, an entertainment vehicle so if you can then say okay well what's really can be useful about it is knowing what's going on in my clients lives and reacting to that that is going to bring you business you know and it's interesting so right like like you know we could i, I won't name but we could name some high profile social media people right um and their target market is national, right? So a real estate coach, say uh, Buffini or um, give me another one. Tom Ferry. Oh, thank you. That's what I was trying to say. Tom Ferry. Ryan Surratt. Am I saying his name mm -hmm. right? Yep. Sirhan. Right? Sirhan. Right? Those guys, right? They're targeting a national, national network, real estate agents. You know, our clients are not national. It's really local to our network. And how many of them are really living on it? And the reality is it's very difficult to boost real estate related type of advertising because of fair housing. Oh, I get did things, ads denied all the time that have nothing to do with fair housing simply because real estate's mentioned in the title. And who you should be promoting that to is your network, your friends and your friends of friends. Well, you can't do that. So the reality is probably five to 6% of your network may be seeing, I'm not saying don't do it, 
but you got to complement it with direct mail, email marketing, some outdoor marketing. But again, if, if, if you are like most real estate agents, 5% being involved with your network and 95% branding, networking, and just being reactive, you get that balance of 50-50, you're going to do what that individual that I just showed you is close to $20 million a year to date. And I can take that individual and put him side by side with other real estate agents that I know in different marketplaces. And there's no way that real estate agent should be selling more real estate than the other agent, but he's just committed and dedicated to being consistent. And that's all it comes down to. It's my job to make everybody crystal clear that's the only differentiator any one of you can have it when you decide A, to start, and then B, to be consistent with it and follow through it for a full year. Yeah, if, if you if you just, tr well, it's it's really, you need a guide. I think you need somebody that can help get you out of the habits that you've created that aren't helpful. Um, and you need a guide, meaning a coach, uh, a, an accountability partner. This is where coaching comes in and, and this is where, you guys, uh, your firm in particular really helps. And not that every agent wants that particular help, but boy, I know if I was a working agent, I would want somebody keeping me uh, accountable, making sure I have systems in place to make sure that I stay on target. Because we all know uh, that us, uh, everyone listening, we all have parts of our life that we want to do other things that we can't get ourselves to do, right? Maybe we right. want to go to the gym more. Maybe we want to spend more time with our kids. Maybe we want to be better about our finances, whatever it might be, or, or maybe work more on our business or whatever it is. And we just don't seem to do it. And if you can get a coach to help you, um, it's worth well, the investment. Well, we'll, we'll also, so, so even besides coaching, some people don't want to have coaching, but what we'll do is we'll take the transaction management and the monthly marketing off your hands. Um, and, 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 and provide that for you and have it done for you so that you're even more motivated to be engaged with that network and then taking care of your CRM and tracking your business. Um, you know, I will, you know, I'll attest to my wife. She does 25 million in volume every year. And, you know, she, I mean, her marketing is very simple. It's done consistently. It consists of social media posts once or twice a week which, you know, are provided to her, uh, a postcard once a month to her network and her farm, uh, some mag local magazine ads in the neighborhood. And that's it. And she doesn't even touch that stuff. And she's in flow with probably five or six people in her network a day. And therefore, she is able to be a mom first and foremost and focus on the three girls and taking care of me and everything else while putting up tremendous numbers and not killing herself. Because she's consistent with it. Could she do more? Absolutely. But she doesn't want to. She's great where she is. Um, so am I. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, that's a that's a heck of a good full-time income without all the other responsibilities. Wonderful. Right? Just yeah. being an agent, that's a heck of a good income. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anybody can have it. it. Anybody can have it. But it's, again, are you more on the MLS? <laughs> are you more in your transaction management software? Are you more texting and emailing active and existing clients? And are you just not prospecting? And when I say prospecting, it's not calling and asking for a referral. It's calling and nurturing relationships and following a system. It's people choose to drive blind every single day with the most important part of their life, besides family and health, that, you know, the third part, business, which is income, it's financial health. It's like, it's beyond me. You got to take control anybody could do you could start whenever you want and especially in times now like now and what's to come people are going to realize how more and more focused you have to be uh that it's not just going to come to you we can't be order takers we got to be very proactive got to be very uh business uh oriented uh and be very proactive versus reactive and what this will will do um having structure and knowing exactly what your day is you know, sort of looks like, and I know things change, of course, but knowing the, the approximate structure of the day will uh, alleviate a tremendous amount of anxiety because what you'll find is you're not worried as much about when's that important phone call going to come in with somebody who needs me to buy or sell. Um, you, you are taking proactive steps and, and you're making your own luck. Those phone calls will come in over time. Like you said, to work this for a year and see what happens. Right. Um, and, and, and then just continue to work it forever. And there, there you go. That's it. It's that simple.
Awesome. Well, what a great place to wrap up. I should mention for anyone who is in the who lives in Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, Florida, um, you know, Ryan is company. They're not in every part of every state, but if you live in those states and you're interested in learning more about what Ryan's companies do, again, they have real estate brokerage, they've got a lending. So if you're a loan officer and you're looking to see what other options are out there, of course, speak to them too. They have title, they've got a technology firm where they're putting out software. Um, but if you're just in, in, you know, most most of our listeners are going to be agents. If you're really just wanting to see what other firms offer, um, you know, check out DAPRO Properties. They they really have a unique value proposition. They're not just like all of the other firms. Um, they really really try to focus on what are the hardest things that agents struggle with, and they allow you to take that off your plate. And this has to do with some marketing and staying in, in flow and staying in touch, so that you can focus on what's best in your business. I've yet to really see a firm. I don't know of any other firms that do it. So this is this is truthfully that's a really really unique proposition, and you owe it to yourself to see what they offer and see if it's a good fit for you. So go to dapolproperties.com. Their team would love to chat with you. And uh, so on behalf of all of us here at the podcast and all the listeners. We thank Ryan for coming on every month. He's got four thank businesses you. to run and we are, and he's got a daughter in college and uh, two others in, uh, and so the other two in high school too, I think, right? Yeah, junior, senior. In fact, I have a coaching session here at three o'clock. Then I'm going to watch my uh, daughter cheerlead and then come back for a 5.30 meeting. So. so he's a busy guy and he takes time out for us um, and we appreciate it. So thank you, Ryan. And on behalf of our Ryan and myself, we thank everyone for listening. Please tell a friend about our show and support our sponsors on the show. Support Ryan. Um, as well as tell a friend and also leave us a review. Just let us know what you think of the show. That'll help us continue to improve. All right, Ryan, thank you so much. We will see you on the next, uh, see you next month. All right, DJ, take care.